I didn't really have an intro for this video, but it was kind of weird going straight into it, so... My name's Christy, and I've been wanting to make a video about growing up Asian in Australia for a while, but I never got around to it. But watching Shang-Chi recently kind of got me thinking about a lot of things, and this is... this is my thoughts. Here are my thoughts. Hope you enjoy. <laughs> Hi. So I was born in Hong Kong in 2001 and we moved to Australia in 2010 because my family realised that I was failing grade school. And so I've spent most of my life here, you know, the past 11, 12 years, whitewashing myself, pretty much, just trying to fit in. And this movie was kind of the first time that I saw any kind of ABC representation, like ever in Hollywood. This was the first movie I've ever seen where there were actually Western Asians. Like I know there were Americans but it was still kind of close enough. I also like how Australian also starts with an A so I can also say ABC but it's just such a different experience being ABC compared to being native Asian and it's as I said it's the first time that I've ever seen it. I can't believe it. In my 20 years of life I never thought that this was something that I needed because I just never seen it and in such a big blockbuster, like Marvel, Hollywood, massive movie. It was just so nice to see that for once. And um, yeah, I fucking cried in the first 10 minutes. Not because of the plot or anything sad or anything. It was just, I was like, oh shit. Like I can see myself on the big screen. And I, I never realized that I never had that before until I had it in that moment. Yeah, so these are a few things that are very, very relatable <laughs> to me as I was watching the movie and I just thought I would, I would share some of it. Like the part where Sean was like, my name's not actually Sean, it's Shang-Chi. And Katie was like, Shang-Chi, Shang-Chi, shang -Chi, and she couldn't say it. Fuck, I felt that in my fucking soul. Let me tell you, because hi, my name's Christy, but my name's not actually Christy. It's actually supposed to be Kirsty, fun fact. My dad wanted to be Kirsty and my mom misspelt it, so. My name's a mistake, <laughs> but that's not the point of this. I've had to live my whole life with my name legally being Tiyui. I know. There is no vowels in this. How, how the fuck do you pronounce it? So every single time I'd go into class, and this was like, especially when I was young and I just moved here, I could barely speak English. So little me, little, little Christy, little Tiyui, going to class, just moved here to Australia from Hong Kong. Like the teacher would always mark the role and my name would usually be at the very bottom. And she'd be like marking off all the, you know, normal names like Jessica, Brian, fucking Kate. And then she'd get to mine every single time without fail. She'd always be like, Tiyui? And then like and just make this like random sound. And I'll be like, yeah, me, Christy, that's Christy. And then they're always, I mean, they're always nice about it. Usually they're like, oh, sorry. And then they quickly write it down so that they don't have to go through that again. But that was something that I've always had to deal with my whole life. And I get it. People have it worse, blah, blah, blah. Shut the fuck up. It's not that big of a deal. But I never, <laughs> I've never seen that in like a fucking massive Hollywood movie. And I didn't realize that I needed to see that until I saw it. And that part literally made me cry. Like, I don't know why. I was just sitting there. This was like the first like 10, 20 minutes, I think. And I was just there. And like, the movie hasn't even really started yet. And I was just crying, like my eyes out. Because he said, my name's not actually Sean, it's Shang-Chi. That's it. That, that was the line that made me fucking cry. And if that doesn't tell you how alone I've always felt and how I didn't realize that I felt alone in that and that I finally feel seen for the first time in my life, I don't know what to tell you. Like, I'm not the only person to go through this. I know that for a fact. Like, my best friend Cherie also does this shit. But, I mean, first of all, her name has vowels in it. That's not the point. I was so ashamed of my literal, my name, my face, my hair, my eyes, my like everything, just the way that I looked. I was so scared of being Asian for so many years of my life and um, I didn't realize that that wasn't normal. Uh, I spent so much of my life trying to whitewash myself. Like I have been told, I mean I'm not trying to brag, but I've been told by people that if you close your eyes I kind of sound white, like you wouldn't be able to tell that I was Asian. And I take pride in that because I spent so long <laughs> trying, watching so many movies and TV shows and stuff. That's actually also why I randomly have American accents on certain words when I say it. Because I literally learned, I tried so hard to perfect my English so that I wouldn't be seen as Asian. As if you couldn't take a look at me and be like, oh, like, who's gonna look at me and be like, oh, she's fucking white, like. <laughs> I remember going back to Hong Kong for a holiday and um, relatives and stuff were like, oh, you know, you kind of look half. I'm not half, I'm fully 100% Asian. But that made me feel so good about myself. The fact that someone said that I looked part white and that's so fucked up. <laughs> 
And like Asian culture doesn't help with that either. Like the whole point is trying to become white and like, you know, making their skin lighter, making their eyes bigger, making their nose higher, like everything to make yourself less Asian. But like for what? <laughs> Why can't I just, I feel like this is the first time in my life that I've just, just content and just, just like, I'm just, I just don't need to try to be white. And it sounds so fucking stupid, but like <laughs> this movie really just made me realize how far I'd come in that as well, I guess. And like, yeah, obviously there was the movie Crazy Rich Asians and it was really good. Don't get me wrong. And it's kind of crazy how that's the only point of reference we get for Asian movies in Hollywood, like just Crazy Rich Asians and Shang-Chi, which came out like a few days ago and it's 2021. But, um, but I feel like in a way, which sounds so stupid because Shang-Chi is literally about superheroes, but Crazy Rich Asians kind of felt less relatable than Shang-Chi, just in the way that it was kind of about a rich family and like romance and like being born rich and marrying rich and having a crazy rich Asian family, I guess. And I, I mean, I don't know about you, but I don't have a crazy rich family and that just wasn't very relatable to me. I mean, I also don't have a thousand year old dad with fucking legendary 10 rings and is a Kung Fu fighter or whatever, but you know, like <laughs> for some reason it felt more relatable because the way that they acted was just more ABC and it was just clearly more like they've been around in Western cultures and it was less native Asian, I feel like, and it was less like traditional in a sense. And like the way that Katie was just a valet and she was, I think, I don't know how old she's supposed to be in the movie, but they're both like in their thirties, like the actors, and they don't know what the fuck they're doing with their lives. And they feel like everyone else, like that's another aspect to it as well. That's not even the Asian part. That's just how I feel <laughs> right now is that I feel like I'm, okay, this is getting deep, but I feel like I am not going anywhere with my life. And like, I'm never going to have a career and like, be a doctor or whatever. And I'm still gonna be working like an average valet level job when I'm 30. And, and the way that she was trying to like justify it to herself, like, no, it's fine, it's fine, it's totally fine. Like, I love what I'm doing. That was also so relatable as well. Like that's not even to do with being Asian. That's just, that's just me. But I also love how their jobs was literally being a valet and Katie was like the getaway driver. She was literally the driver for the entire movie. And she's an Asian woman, which is like a doubly negative stereotype for drivers, right? Like women, Asian, whatever. And I just really like how they broke that stereotype too. My dad watched this movie as well, um, but he's definitely a lot more like native Hong Kong and he didn't really get it. He was like, oh, it's just another Kung Fu movie. Like it wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. Like whatever, he didn't really care. Because I feel like this movie was the first movie ever, as I keep saying, this movie is the first one ever that really was directed at Western Asians and at ABCs in particular. I looked online earlier. I think the general reviews from like actual Asian countries isn't that great with Shang-Chi. They don't like the way that things are represented, whatever. They didn't really get it. But the general critics from actual ABCs, especially in like America, I'm pretty sure is like pretty high because this is the first time that we've ever actually seen us like in between is in a massive movie. I keep repeating myself, but this is just so revolutionary and it's so stupid that it this, it's this big for me and that it's this big of a deal and that it's never been done before in 2021 but I guess here we are and I'm glad that it is like I'm glad it's not 2031. There's a part in the movie where Katie was telling the story about how Sean got bullied with some like Korean slur and Katie started singing Hotel California at him to like distract him and confuse him and then he was like broski I'm not Korean. That was also such a big thing that I and I'm sure like a lot of other people could relate to but Fuck, it was annoying. In primary school, I distinctively remember, and like back then, I genuinely, I just moved here. I wasn't good with my English. I was scared of everyone. I got bullied so much for being Asian and I didn't know how to respond. Like now I'd just be like, well, fuck you. Go take your great Northern and shove it up your ass. I don't know. You know, like I don't, I literally don't care anymore. But back then, you know, little old 11 year old me and people would come up to me and be like, can you do And I'd be like, I wouldn't know how to respond. And like people would say, I remember, like it was a thing for some reason to be like easy peasy Japanesey like everyone would always say that and every time someone said Japanesey everyone would like like literally the whole class would just turn around and look at me or like even like you watch a movie in class and there'd be that one Asian in the movie as soon as that Asian character comes up everyone in class would just turn and look at you and it's like cool like what the fuck like <laughs> like and you can't and you can't even get mad because they weren't you couldn't tell on them for being racist in a way. The teacher wouldn't get it anyway. And I didn't feel like I had 
a right to say anything. I didn't feel like they were being discriminatory. I just felt like like it was my fault. Like I was like I was like, yeah, well I guess I did come over here into your white classroom and uh like even people coming along and just being like ni hao for like no fucking reason. And I'm like, well, I'm actually Kanto, so uh, close enough, but not quite there. And I really like how that was in the movie as well. Like, it was such a, it was just such a typical thing. And I've forgotten that I went through that a lot. Like, it was so long ago, and it's been so long since it's bothered me that I forgot that I had to go through all that shit. But watching the movie again, I was like, yeah, holy shit, I've... I've come a long way. <laughs> but probably the most relatable part of this entire movie was when Katie and Sean were walking home in like a dark alleyway and they were like, it's late, we should probably go home. And the other one was like, we could go home. Or, and then it cuts to them like going to karaoke. And that was just the most relatable fucking shit ever because the amount of times that me and my friends have ended up at karaoke because we wanted to stay out and like nothing's fucking open, right? Like it's either going to karaoke or sitting in the car talking for two hours in some random parking lot. And I feel like it's such a specifically like Asian thing to do. I don't know any of my white friends who just casually go to karaoke all the time the way that my Asian friends do. And that was something that I didn't even really realize until I watched that movie. And I was like, oh shit, yeah, that is something that I do. <laughs> also the song choice for Hotel California was pretty good. I don't know if this is what they meant but how I interpret it like it's kind of cheesy but Hotel California there's like a line about how once you're in the hotel you can always check out but you can never truly leave and that's basically what it is here. Like I've come into Australia and I've tried to so hard trust me I've tried so hard my whole life to leave like my Asian part behind me and try to bury it and pretend like it doesn't exist and pretend like I'm white but like broski fucking look <laughs> I'm Asian and like that's always gonna be a part of me obviously and I can never leave that and neither can I leave the Australian part either like I can never go back to Hong Kong and just pretend like I'm a native there again like I can barely speak Kanto at this point <laughs> my main language is English I don't know at what point it changed it's actually really interesting but I used to think in Kanto right like all my primary thoughts used to be in Kanto I used to not know English at all and at some point my brain just kind of switched and I just I think it was like three months after I moved here in grade four my mom told me one day that I was speaking in English in my dream one night I wonder if that was like the point where I just switched my brain to like function in English instead it was like hitting a settings button and being like change language English but it's weird because like certain things will always be in Kanto Kanto for me, like counting is always gonna be easier in Kanto for me. Uh, the timetables, I cannot for the life of me do it in English. <laughs> like I remember we used to play around the world in school and I had my timetable down packed before anyone ever even learnt the zeros timetable. And I would win at like everything, right? Math related, obviously, because Hong Kong level is so much higher. Not when I got older though, like don't get me wrong. When I was in high school, I was falling so far behind, it wasn't even funny. But in primary school, I was top of my class in like all the math and like science subjects. And I would be so good at my timetables written every single time. I would win, I would beat everyone. Except for when we played around the world and I had to do it in English and I had to say it as fast as I could because I had to translate their question back into Kanto, have my answer in Kanto and then translate it back into English and then say it. And it was just, it was a fucking nightmare. Also like Christianity, like I, this is really random, but I mostly went to church a lot in Hong Kong. And even when I moved here, we went to a Chinese church. So if I, I don't pray much anymore, which I really should, but if I ever pray, it has to be in Chinese. Even if it starts out in English, at some point it will change to Chinese and it will end in Chinese. And that's really interesting. I don't know, just like certain things will trigger the canto. I digress, I don't know where the fuck I was going with this. Oh yeah, Hotel California. <laughs> yeah, so the whole movie is literally about just Sean trying to run away from his like Chinese heritage and his past and all of that catching up to him even though he tried so hard to get out of it. He learned to embrace it in the end and you know, I love how the song choice for that, it kind of represented it. I've been rambling for like an hour now and I don't even know what I've been talking about but um, hopefully I can cut this video down to something that kind of makes sense, but for now, thank you for watching this video, I appreciate it, uh, please comment down below if you relate to this at all because I've been feeling so alone for, like, not so much anymore to be honest, I feel a lot better now, but I have felt so alone in this for so much of my life and I would just really appreciate it if you guys could tell me about your experiences as well, but for now, we could end this video. Or... Welcome to the house!